Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the G-Shock Watcher channel. It's been a long time since we've done a browsing of the Bai website. So in this episode, I want to show you some interesting watches, some expensive watches and some watches I'm not sure why they want to bid so high for. Join me as we check out Bai and G-Shock online. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Lovely to have everybody here. Look, we just hit a big milestone. We got over 500 subscribers, and I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this experience, I guess, to build up a community around G-Shocks. Not that there probably isn't many already, but it is something I've enjoyed going and doing and sharing some of my experiences. I get to travel to Japan a lot. I get to see a lot of the shops and uh, watches that are over there. But I also love being able to go ahead and see what we can actually get secondhand uh, on that particular market because there are some unique finds that we can go ahead and actually do. So typically in these uh, buy browsing sessions, we'll start with some of the expensive watches that uh, I'm probably not going to be purchasing because I do value my marriage, uh, but we'll have a look at what they're offering, what those watches look like, and uh, the prices, and then we'll jump into some of the watches that are a little bit more approachable in terms of uh, price. So let's jump over to the, uh, the browser window here. I've got a whole heap of different watches lined up here so as not to waste anybody's time. Let's start off with some of the more expensive ones. Now, this one is obviously a very interesting watch. This is the Frogman, and many people know I have a particular fondness for the Frogmans with the recent purchase, and I just posted up a video on that particular one, a very uh, unique looking Frogman. But it would appear that there are many other uh, unique Frogmans out there as well. This one in particular, the GWF A1000K-2A Frogman, it's the ICERC 30th anniversary watch. Very expensive one too, $2,789. Three hours left on that particular bid, so probably by the time you watch it, it'll be bidded out. There was a second one in that uh, same price range. This is a buyout price for $2,966. That's going from uh, six days from now. Interesting watch. Got the white resin band uh, with the kind of nice looking blue and golds on the actual watch itself. This watch typically goes for around about 110,000 yen. And so if I do my calculations right, some of these prices are upwards of two and a half to three times as much as what these actually retailed for. So you would almost think that if you really were on the reseller market and you got these particular prices, buying these watches when they come out and just sort of sitting on them, they become very expensive very, very quickly, especially to anyone who is a collector. So from 110,000 yen to 318,000 yen to then again uh, 271 thousand yen so these watches do definitely go up in price pretty quick the uh, the other watch which I want to show you can see I've got a fair few here this one's an interesting one this is a MRG 8130 G1 AJR 30th anniversaries G pinnacle high-end model and I was trying to work out what this watch actually was because some of the pictures weren't entirely clear. And it doesn't look like anything that I would normally be interested in. But the price they're asking for is 600,000 yen. And when I had a look at this on the Shockbase website, here's the watch, but no real prices. And I was trying to match this up. It's as close as I could get it. Um, it doesn't give me a date for when it came out. It's definitely an MRG. Uh, it definitely looks the same, but I couldn't necessarily match these ones up. But surprised to see a watch like this for five thousand six hundred dollars sing or, or six hundred thousand dollars six hundred thousand yen. So super expensive watch that one. Um, this one I found super interesting. Uh, this one is a Dragon Ball Z watch, uh, a collaboration model, and uh, it's got the Z Fighter logo on there, the uh, the Dragon Ball on the actual uh, uh, watch as well, um, and I'm not sure about the Crackle Crackle 
uh, view over it, but I'm guessing uh, if you watch uh, Dragon Ball, you typically see Goku doing his Kamehamehas and sort of building up his power, and maybe that is what it results to. Actually, looking at the side, it looks like that could be Goku's hair uh, when he goes Super Saiyan and kind of scary that I actually know a little bit too much about this particular uh, uh, cartoon series, but it is a lot of fun. Um, this watch is going for 280,000 yen at the buyout price. Now, when this launched, this watch launched at 24,000 yen. So if you do your calculations, 24,000 yen at the launch price, 280,000 yen on the buyout. Now, of course, that's really if somebody buys it, but that's a 10x price increase. That is just crazy for a watch based off a uh, uh, an anime series, a great anime series. Don't get me wrong, I love Dragon Ball Z, but you know, 24,000 to 280,000 is incredible. Moving on, this one was an interesting one. Uh, brand new, unused domestic release G-Shock GMW B5000TB-1JR, full metal titanium. And I was like, I need to have a look at this. And I was trying to, to look at the watch and I couldn't see too much. So of course, you know, you do what most people do is you go to Shockbase and you, you check out what's actually there. And so I went to Shockbase and this is the watch it comes up with. It's a resin watch by the looks of things. Like that doesn't look like it's metal, although I could be uh, very, very wrong. Um, it says, okay, band titanium. Okay, so maybe it is a titanium watch. The pricing here, let's see, 150,000 yen, and they're asking for 315,000 yen. So a 2x increase. And perhaps this is on the fact that you can't actually get a hold of the watch anymore, but you know, interesting watch to go ahead and fight for. This one I really liked, super expensive. $12,000 sing getting up to, 11,100 sing. Um, and the watch itself, the photos don't do a great job, um, but you know, it looks kind of blue. If I look at what's on the site, this is the watch. This is what I could actually pick up from the tag. There was a tag on the actual photos, which was really hard to see. I found one photo which had a decent uh, view, but this is the watch itself. This watch came out uh, at a price of $10,500. Um, no yen on there, which I thought was kind of interesting, but $10,500, it's now going for 11,000. So it's about a $600 premium on the watch, but it's a very pretty watch. It kind of has that, that look about it, wrong one. Uh, in terms of the way they hammer the metalwork into the actual watch itself. So um, really, really nice watch. Love the look of it. Um, same as these ones as well. These are some of the other MRGs which have that sort of metal beaten look about it uh, in honor of some of the Japanese uh, armor. So this one, 880,000 yen, currently going for 840,000 yen. So you could probably pick it up at a bit of a discount. And this last one, same thing again, you've got this uh, MRG with a bit of the beaten metal look. Uh, this one going for 528,000 yen. And when it came out, we're looking at the US pricing, so 5,500. Uh, it's, a, it's a cheaper watch than what's actually on the market there at the moment. So it's about $600 cheaper. That, that's US versus Sing. So $600, $800 uh, cheaper. So some very nice watches uh, that you can go ahead and actually pick up. Some of the other ones I thought that were kind of interesting just to, to take a look. Um, this one is one I had purchased myself. It's a uh, wildlife promising watch, Bluetooth. It's a G-Steel, uh, very unique. It's kind of uh, bold. Uh, let's just say that when I wear it and people notice it, they're kind of like, what's the deal with the Python skin? Uh, watch. Uh, just like it. It's kind of cool. Um, and I got it for a decent price. I mean, this one right now is going for uh, 35,981 yen. At the launch price, it was 61,000. So it's about 50% off. There is another version of this watch. It's more, um, it's on the MRG, but it's certainly a, a chunkier watch. It's an MTG version. I'd love to get the MTG version. That one just looks totally crazy. Um, but this one I managed to pick up before 
This price is 32,000. The one I picked up before I got it for 31,000 uh, yen. So that was uh, kind of unique. The other one, I should sort of show you there, 31,000 is what I got it for. Um, cool watch, something different. The other one that's interesting, I don't know why, just the colors were kind of crazy. This is a Tough Solar uh, g Light watch. So it has at the top the, uh, the tides in terms of what's actually going on. But the very interesting green and yellow, the green collection. Uh, this watch came out for 16,500 yen. Right now on auction, it is at 71 yen. So if you really wanted to pick up a very unique watch, uh, digital, and looks like a positive display versus a negative display, which is always better. <laughs> super, super cheap. Uh, I am sure as the bids go on, the price will go up, uh, but haven't seen one like that for a, uh, a while. A um, couple other ones that are interesting to go have a look based on prices. Uh, this is a GM B2100, so your Casio kind of watches. This is a great watch if you wanted to test out modding. Um, this one's for 41 yen. Now, here's the interesting thing. A B2100 PC, the reason I, I kind of looked at this a little bit more as so I went this is a fairly recent watch I thought and, and definitely the price is a lot higher because it's also a steel watch if I remember um, so I went to check this one out and this one is a multicolor graduation the band is metal right it's a negative display which can be a bit of a pain in the bum but when it came out it was 80,300 yen and right now it's at 41 yen. So that's a pretty incredible price. So what is the problem? Well, again, seven days to go, but I think when we look at this particular watch, looking for where it's not working, hard to see from here, but there is a picture which will show you probably the reason why it's starting off fairly low. And we just go across and there is potentially the issue. There's a scratch just there on the face. But if you could deal with that and if you could get it at a, I'm not sure why that one's actually there. If you could get it at a reasonable price, um, it's not too bad at all. You know, you're not going to get it for 41 yen. For sure, the prices will go up. Uh, but at that price, it's a fairly cheap sort of bid to be able to get onto as well. So interesting watch. Um, moving ahead, this is actually kind of cool. This is a black and gold Mudmaster. And I haven't seen these before. Uh, the Mudmasters are great watches, big chunky uh, watches you can wear on your wrist. This one looks pretty good. Um, it's obviously seen a little bit of wear, but it's not a bad sort of watch. It's a bit more unique. Uh, the watch itself came out for 85,000 yen. It's currently at 11,000 yen. So the price is quite cheap compared to what you can get. A little bit of red in there. It's not a bad uh, bad Mudmaster. And I went and did the research. This one is a, uh, a special series, a Gold Master of G series. So there was a, uh, a Golf Master which would be this one. There was the Mud Master, and then there was a Gravity Master. Um, and all of them pretty, uh, pretty cool looking watches. So uh, the Golf Master was the cheapest one. Then you've got the Mud Master at 800 and the Gravity Master at 1000. Kind of like the, the Gravity Master. That was a, uh, a nice looking watch. Uh, whereas down here, couple of nice little highlights on as well have to, to keep an eye out for one of those if it comes out again um, but not a bad uh, bad little watch that one so you know if you're in for something unique a, a mud master a little bit of wear and tear four days to go it's at 11,000 yen uh, now wrapping up the last couple of things I wanted to quickly jump in on uh, there is the range bands the range bands are always fun they're they can get pricey as well uh, don't get me wrong, they're not cheap, but they're great. I'm wearing my black and yellow Rangeman today. Uh, I do love my Rangeman. Super comfortable, uh, especially look good with the positive displays. 
I've got this black and yellow one. I've got my uh, my Hong Kong Fire Service Department one as well, which uh, again, I've got a video I can put at the end on that one. Uh, but there's plenty more of these watches to go ahead and actually hunt down, right? So um, bear in mind, most of them go for about 54,000 at retail launch, right? 54,000. So have that number in your head as we look at some of these watches. So uh, this one was at 11,000. Can't bid on this one because it probably doesn't ship to Singapore, but super cheap price. But this is your sort of standard range man. Probably taking a bit of a beating this one uh, when we look at it, a few, uh, a few hits, but that's where we can start from. But as we start to look at some of the other ones, here we've got a Love the Earth and Sea range man. Very bad pictures here, but uh, it's obviously the uh, environmental one. So if we go back and we can probably do this in real time. Range man and look for a green one. It might be this one here. 50,000 it went for when it first came out. Now it's at... 99,000 for a buyout price. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty pricey. The next one here, this is the emergency firefighting assistance uh, in Japan. I love these ones. I really want to grab one one day. The black, the red, the gold on the side. A little bit different to the, the fire department one which I have for Hong Kong, which is more of a sort of a, a purpley red, but it's got the beautiful Hong Kong Fire Service Department insignia on the back. This one also has the insignia on the back of this watch as well, which is of the uh, the Fire Services Department in Japan. 90,000, right? It kind of adds up pretty quick. So if we go back, that one is this one. Oh no, that's my Hong Kong one. There's no price on that one. Uh, let's see here. It's a bit tricky to find sometimes. Let's go back and have a look at it again. Ah, okay, not red. Black on red. This one. 50,000 when it came out. Currently 90,000. Price keeps going up on uh, on this particular watch. Sorry. So there is there 50,000 and currently going for 90,000. Uh, this one, another Love the Earth and Sea. 78,000. If we go back... It's this one here, 54,000 when it came out. And then uh, one of the other standard ones, this one is 13,500 yen. Uh, if we go back, 13,500 yen. Let's have a look see. Black, this one, 55,000. So some of these. Obviously, these standard ones are a lot cheaper in the second-hand market, but it's the collaboration ones which are the more expensive ones. And uh, maybe that's the next thing to go ahead and actually hunt down is what's the next collaboration watch to uh, to see if we can actually find. Because they are hard to find. And the range mans are, as I sort of say, they, they are great watches, super comfortable, really nice to be able to find. So... Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Uh, that was a quick browse through some of the interesting G-Shock watches on Bai. Um, I hope you have fun with that. I'll uh, post up some of the links to the, uh, the watches in the description below. But thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, please like and subscribe if you have a chance. Really uh, enjoy building up the community. Enjoy your support and your comments. Thank you very much. Take care.